<laughs> Welcome friends! I've made another stovetop fan from junk. This time it's improved though, it's got overheat protection. If you're curious to see how that's going to work, stick around and I'll show you how. We're going to want about a 13mm hole for that plunger. While I get on with that, let me explain what is going on here. So we're drilling the hot side riser block. Its job is to transmit heat from the top of the stove to the TEG unit. If none of that made any sense to you, go check out my previous video all about stove pans. Or follow the link in the description that goes to an instructable that explains right from the ground up all about them. But honestly, if you're patient and you watch along, I think you'll get it anyway. So, the problem we've got is these little dudes, the TEGs, they fry really easily, even on the proper modules, the expensive camphor ones that you can buy that are like 20 quid each. They just don't last very long. Uh, the solder inside melts. These ones here are rated for 150 degrees C, and although I try and make the riser block reduce the temperature enough, so that by the time it gets to the Peltier, it's down to below or at 150 degrees C. There's always these occasions where it rises above and the fire's like going a bit crazy and going a bit nuts and then boom, there goes your Peltiers. So the solution is going to want to be somehow reducing the temperature when the stove's too hot. One way of doing that would be just to make a bigger riser which would dissipate more heat, but then you lose the workability at low temperatures then. So another possibility is to change this so that as it warms up, if it gets too hot, there somehow a gap appears between this and the bottom. And that's what the one we're working towards. So we can save our annoyingly fragile peltiers. So I've got my old surface plate here, it's still flat in some places. <laughs> oh, this was actually scraped very flat at one point, but anyway, 600 quid, wet and dry. This scrap of copper is very unflat to start with, it's just a bit of old bus bar, so it has no reason to be flat. But we want it to make as close a mating contact with the TEGs as possible, so it's getting flattened slowly. The trick here is to start with a nice low grit and work your way up. I started at 600 and I was way over optimistic about how flat it was to start with. Okay, in there. So it's definitely a tad tedious, but it's probably worth it to get a really good connection. And after doing one side of that, I was losing the will to live, so we're ploughing on and we'll do the other side later. Yeah, left-handed. Can be done. I forgot to mention one other solution, which is to increase airflow through this so that it dissipates as the, the power increases. So as the temperature rises, ideally the power that's coming out of the poster will increase, therefore speed will increase, cooling this better, which kind of will provide a little check and balancey kind of thing. So if we increase the power of the poster by say doubling them, having two poters, that should also hopefully provide a bit of extra cooling and therefore reduce the risk to the power and the hotter it goes, the more it will tend to cool it down and blah, blah, blah. 
back to the hot side riser and the hole we're making in it. This bolt's going to fit quite nicely. It's a bit rough and we'll need some rounding off. I was really struggling to scribe through, down through this cylinder to accurately mark out these four holes and then I remembered that I have this gasket so I can use that to mark out. Otherwise it would just be a question of measuring and marking out the old fashioned way with the calipers. So we're all marked up and ready to go. We're going to be drilling a 4.2mm hole and that's of course for an M5 thread. So we'll probably have to stand it up on something. Perhaps this. Let's drill. machine taps that's got a, like a helical thread and for aluminium it should be just fine safest but it works. So I think it's definitely time that we clean up this surface a bit that the Peltier is going to sit on. This old CPU heatsink had a ground flat surface anyway which was very useful. I just have to clean away any traces of old thermal grease and make it respectable. Let's chuck it up. We can make the sliding pin that will push the hot side rise block away from the stove top out of just a regular bolt and here I'm just rounding that off so the threads and the head are nicely smoothed over and won't catch on the spring or the hole they sit in. Once that sliding pin's nicely rounded off let's mark up the copper plate. We've got these little divots to make. Now I'm using the mill for this. It would have been much easier to just drill holes but because they're right on the edge I've got to make these divots. You could easily do this with a file or an angle grinder. Two hands or one hand? That's the question. Next time I'm using the power hacksaw. So we want a little scrap of pipe like this to support the wax thermostat inside the cylinder bore. And it wants to be as square as possible to do this, so careful hack sawing is recommended. In my case, I needed to square them up a bit on the disc sander. What is this pipe actually supporting, I hear you ask? Well, it's this automotive-style wax thermostat, which is kind of the prime mover of this whole operation. It's what's going to push that sliding pin, which will eventually lift the whole thing away from the surface of the stove. These things are simple, robust and reliable, so they should serve this purpose quite well. I'll leave a link to the one I'm using, along with all the bits really, in the description. Let's recap. This piece I remade because it wasn't seating on the top very well. So now what we have is this little bit of tubing that I found. This sits in there really nicely because I made a little ridge for it to sit into and that goes in there so now the thermostat 
wax and the spat is sitting in there really quite nicely. So we just need another bit of pipe I've got here to fit on top of that and just to hold it all firmly in place. So I'm just marking off where that's going to go. Now I certainly don't need a lathe to do this, a uh, hacksaw would do just fine but any excuse to get the camera thrown lathe crocodile going. After that this is what we've got, these two pipes are sandwiching the wax thermostat nicely and holding it nice and sturdily inside the cylinder bore. The problem we've got is that the wires are going to struggle to get through down through all these pipes. So we can make a hole in the pipe that lines up with the port on the side of the cylinder bore so the cables can run through that. Guys we are so nearly ready for assembly I can taste it. Final assembly that is. Um, I just need to clean this copper pad up really nicely, sand it down a bit I think because that will be making important contact both with the cold side and the peltier so it really needs to transmit the heat well. Then we might need to get set to go for this thing. Okay. Mistake, they're coming out sort of the wrong side. So, Peltier wise, I'm going to be soldering these up in series. So, black's going to red, just joining, and then we've got these two. And in series rather than parallel, I should hopefully give the motor a bit more, a bit more oomph. So, let's get soldering. <laughs> It makes assembly a whole bit more messy, but don't forget the thermal compound round the cold side especially and that's between the cylinder and the copper and the copper and the TEG. They're the most important bits to really minimise thermal resistance. Oops, forgot to put the rounded over bolt in there, so disassembly and reassembly. So before we go any further, I just want to test the direction it's going on the iron there. I'm loading the fire up really well, so we should get absolute boring. These are really dry bits. Oh, 
Oh, this is exciting. It's getting going. It's just started. We're just under 100 degrees on the stove top. Wow, more like 75 really. But it's going really well. No sign of wax thermostat doing anything. This is very exciting. I wonder when it's going to pop up, if it pops up. Look at this, guys. It's still running which is great, but look at the temperature, it's way hot. It's like 250 down there. You can see there's a gap there, which means the thermostat's worked. So look at that, it's worked. It's hot too. The white of the TG Seems to be about 150, which is of course the limit. Okay guys, this is working great. You can see how it's tipped up there and everything. So it's just on the corner down the bottom, which is basically stopping heat transfer up to the Peltiers here. The stove top here is about 300 degrees which is a lot hotter than you'd normally want to run it, but I was over burning it just for this test. Um, so it's working great. Let's lift it up. How great is that? I'm pretty pleased in general. Uh, time will tell how long these Pelcher elements last. You seem to get different quality ones, but at the moment, this is top notch. So the fire surely can't be going too much longer and the temperature should start dropping and hopefully when that happens this is going to lower down. I kind of feel like it's all, I've seen it lower down already but it's hard to say because I think that might be placebo. So we're going to leave it recording and see how long it lowers down and see what temperature it is when it lowers down. So it's lowered enough to be seem in contact, it's not quite in contact, you can tell by rocking it. Another way of doing it, if I wasn't using a chainsaw cylinder, an old one, to, as the sort of cold side heat sink, would be to extend out here and just have a little thermostat, something like that, round there, a little mechanism there, and it would just tilt everything up that way. That would be fine too, or even, well, you wouldn't really want it behind, but yeah, to, to either side, something like that could work just fine. You could even add it on to existing stovetop fans, and that would be quite a big improvement, I think, especially if you've already replaced the Peltier TEG elements once or twice already. Next time you come to replace them, I definitely would recommend creating some kind of safety system like this that prevents it from overheating and they should last a lot, a lot longer that way. Now it's cooled down a bit, I can actually pick it up. We can have a look underneath. Oh, look at that. And that bolt has retracted all the way back, which is really good. That's ideal. So it's working just as I hoped, really. You can see the bolt just through that little gap in the middle there. Oh, it's hot on the bottom still. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's all good. It's all go. If you want to know where I got any of the parts from, I'll leave a full list of places you can get them from in the description. Mainly scavenging though. I recommend you get fully into the scavenging spirit. It might be hard to scavenge one of the wax thermostats, though you probably pull one from a scrapyard. It's going to be a very oily, coolanty job, so it's probably worth paying the five pounds or few bucks or whatever it is to get one. Friends, thanks for joining me for that. It's been a blast. I hope you find this useful if you do make one of these chainsaw cylinder stovetop fan things. As you've obviously enjoyed this and sticked with it through to the end, you're going to love some of my other videos, so I really recommend you hit the subscribe button, possibly even the alerts thing, so you get told when, I'm, when my new videos come out. 